Welcome to Chapter 5's lecture, Solving Problems, Decision-Making and the Supervisor. Listed here are the four learning objectives for this chapter. All supervisors must make decisions on how to solve problems every day, and so the ability to choose between alternatives is one of the most important skills a supervisor can possess. This skill can be learned and must be practiced. Decisions can either be programmed, which are repetitive and routine, or non-programmed. These are problems that are unique and new. Programmed decisions can be more readily delegated to subordinates, but non-programmed decisions, which require creativity and thought to solve, should not often be delegated. There are seven basic steps to, to the decision-making process. First, you have to define the problem. Then you have to analyze the problem, gathering all the facts and information. Third, you have to establish decision criteria. Fourth, you have to develop alternatives. Fifth, you have to evaluate the alternatives. Next, you have to select the best alternatives. And then finally, number seven, you have to follow up and appraise the results. Each step is important to developing an appropriate solution to any problem. However, the amount of time spent in each step will vary according to the nature of the problem, the importance of the problem, and the information available. If supervisors make hasty decisions, they are making decisions without all the information that's available. They may be putting a bandage on a problem that is far larger than they realize, or they may recommend an inappropriate solution that could have deleterious repercussions in the future. Supervisors should take the time to find out enough about the problem to go through the decision-making process and to make an appropriate recommendation. Decision-making involves defining problems and choosing a course of action from among many alternatives. Decision-making is an important skill that supervisors have to learn and make the effort to practice. Supervisors must also give employees the chance to learn these skills as well. As we enter the 21st century, more and more companies are creating empowered employee teams in order to move the authority for decision-making down the corporate ladder. Companies who are successful in this, like Motorola, General Electric, and Whirlpool, have found it necessary to train their employees, communicate effectively with them, and to remain flexible about the decisions to which these teams come. Further, successful companies have a high degree of trust in subordinates to make the best decisions. They are willing to provide feedback on how the company fared once these decisions were implemented, and they're also willing to reward employees for outstanding decision-making. Program decisions are solutions to repetitive and routine problems provided by existing policies, procedures, rules, and so on. These types of decisions can be readily delegated to subordinates. Non-program decisions, however, require solutions to unique problems that require judgment, intuition, and creativity. Approximately one-half of management decisions go wrong. Some of the reasons include poor problem definition, choosing quick fix solutions, and limiting participation in decision making. To improve the odds of success, sub supervisors should personally manage the decision making process, establish clear objectives while searching for new ideas, and manage roadblock intervention. The decision-making process is a systematic step-by-step -step process to aid in choosing the best alternative. In the slides that follow, I'll give details on how each of these steps is accomplished. Step 1. Defining the problem. This is actually much more difficult than novices expect because any problem could be clouded by misleading symptoms. Identifying the real problem and formulating it in a problem statement is well worth the time and effort it takes. Step 2 is analyzing the problem by gathering all the facts and information that you can within the time frame you're allowed. The supervisor should be as objective as possible when gathering information on both tangible and intangible factors. The fishbone technique is the cause and effect diagram. You can use the cause and effect approach to consider potential interrelatedness of problem causes in decision making. Decision criteria establish the standards to use in evaluating alternatives. 
These are statements of what the supervisor hopes to accomplish and will later determine how well the solution is being implemented. Sample decision criteria include things like work assignments completed on time, no financial costs were incurred, no jobs are put in jeopardy. When you develop alternatives, you want as many possible solutions as can reasonably be developed. Typically, the more solutions that are developed, the better the final decision. Creative problem solving and brainstorming are techniques that can help. Brainstorm means that you're going for a free flow of ideas in a group while suspending judgment. It's aimed at developing as many alternative solutions to a problem as possible. There are four major guidelines for effective brainstorming. These include deferring all judgment of ideas, seeking quantity of ideas, encouraging freewheeling, and hitchhiking or building on existing ideas. The nominal group technique means there's a group brainstorming and decision-making process by which individual members first identify alternative solutions privately and then share, evaluate, and decide on them as a group. Ethical considerations means that only alternatives which are lawful and acceptable should be considered. Ethical tests means that considerations or guidelines should be addressed in, in developing and evaluating ethical aspects of decision alternatives. Evaluating the alternatives. After eliminating alternatives which don't meet the predetermined decision criteria, remaining alternatives can be evaluated more carefully. How well does each alternative meet the decision criteria? There will always be risk. How does each alternative minimize risk in different areas? To select the best alternative, supervisors must rely on their experience, intuition, advice from others, experimentation, and statistical and quantitative decision making. Optimizing means selecting the best alternative. Satisficing means selecting the alternative that meets the minimal decision criteria. Choosing the best alternative is based on experience, intuition, advice from others, experimentation, and quantitative decision making. Experience. Knowledge gained from experience is a helpful guide, but it must always be viewed with the future in mind. Intuition. When other alternatives have failed, new ideas based on the supervisor's intuition may bring positive results. Advice from others. Additional information may increase the quality of the decision and increase its acceptance. Experimentation means trying out different ideas or solutions if possible. Quantitative decision making. Computer programs now make techniques such as linear programming, operations research, and probability and simulation models accessible to the supervisor. Supervisors need to follow up and appraise the results of their decision making. This can take whatever form is appropriate to the importance of the decision, but some form of follow up is necessary. What if there is a problem? The supervisor's decision making process must begin all over again using this new information in every step. What if things have turned out well? Then it's not necessary to go through the process again for this problem until something in the environment or the firm changes, which will start the process all over again. As a supervisor, you'll often be required to make snappy decisions, but try and take as much time in coming up with decisions as possible. Seek as many opinions and suggestions from experienced people as you can. Get as many facts together as you can. Keep an open mind. Use objective criteria, criteria rather than biased information. And admit and rectify any mistakes that you make. Supervisors cannot go through the decision-making process for every problem they face. Program decisions don't usually require this, but non-program decisions do. Supervisors should take as much time as they can to find out about the problem to go through the decision-making process to make the best recommendation. Employees can help in any step of the decision-making process from problem identification through follow-up. While this takes much more time, as a form of employee participation, it can raise morale and develop the employee's decision-making skills.